He has studied as engineer in electrical and electronics. He has worked as IAS officer for seven years. During 2019 parliamentary election, he had served as returning officer and had spoken about the vulnerability of EVM system in interviews and on social media. He had raised this issue during the training of returning officers in Delhi conducted by ECI before 2019 election too. He speaks about the current EVM system after seeing it in operation and raising concerns about the same. Mr. Madhav Deshpande, many of you might have heard him before in interviews with Indie Podcast as well as Wired. He's an expert with vital experience from field of algorithm networks in computer science and also co-founder of Tulip Software and Mukta Vidya Open School. He's the architect and lead of works world's first mobile-based low-level storage management app. He has identified key problems with our current EVM system and also had suggestions for dealing with those critical problems. Our next, uh, the last speaker is uh, Mr. Madhav Deshpande. Uh, as he was introduced, he is a technical expert apart from various other things. So may I request uh, Mr. Deshpande to speak? I'll start with VVPAT. And if uh, I'm allowed to share my screen, I would like to show a half a minute kind of animation. It's a very rudimentary animation, but I believe that might bring clarity to a lot of things. Can manage uh, arrangement at present is like this. The voter walks up to the ballot unit, decides on casting a yellow vote. The vote goes to the VVPAT. VVPAT prints a yellow slip, which the voter sees, but VVPAT further may transmit a gray vote than transmitting a yellow vote. That's the big problem that Mr. Kanan was talking about. A desirable arrangement would be the voter goes to the ballot unit, decides to cast a blue vote, and that blue vote is simultaneously transmitted to control unit and VVPAT. VVPAT prints the blue receipt, which the voter sees, and thereafter control unit registers the same blue vote clearly it is very obvious that in this case the vvpad does not connect to the control unit in any way and the reason i believe the animation uh, might have made things clearer uh, because it's easier to when you see it with your eyes uh, the problem here with vvpad is that as mr kanan said of the three devices that make up the evm it is the only device that is not location agnostic, which means which is sensitive to location. And it is also the device which has a program which is built to recognize the signal that the ballot unit sends it, to read that uh, signal and to map it on a table which has candidate number, candidate name, and the symbol and then print that candidate number. Now imagine, and for those who have heard me before, maybe you will find this a repetition, but imagine that the table that has this candidate number, name, party name, and symbol, if this table to the row of the candidate which one wants to favor, at the end, if one puts an asterisk or a star, and the program is already written. Program doesn't have to change. It is already written to recognize where the star is. And the, the candidate that has a star against it at the in the last column will get maybe every third or fifth or seventh vote. Now here you don't have to change the program that has already gone into the VVPAT. The data is what makes the does the trick. So VVPAT is the weakest link. It is the vulner most vulnerable part. And VVPAT ne needs to go away from being in the middle to being either connected to the control unit or connected to the ballot unit, but not to both. And I personally feel as a technical person, it should not be connected to control unit because the way con control unit and ballot unit are connected is called technically a serial cable. And that serial cable 
communicates two ways. So while it receives data, it can also give data or even give commands. So if VVPAT is connected to the control unit, it could not only give data to control unit, but it could also ask it to store that data in a particular way or overwrite the already received vote. So that is a big risk. So the VVPAT has to get away from being in the middle. It has to be connected only to the ballot unit and the ballot unit has to be connected to both the control unit and the VVPAT and give that signal simultaneously. So we would be sure that what we saw in the paper slip is what was stored in the control unit. That That's one easy solution. It doesn't take a whole lot to do that. The other problem is that at no point in time, and this comes from the fact that this whole system was designed in 1977 when electronics and uh, internet and computers all were very, very nascent. So naturally, like we had Fiat cars in 1977, which were considered to be better cars than other cars. But then soon after Maruti came, we found them under-designed, inadequate in terms of their features, what they could do, how they would work, and so on and so forth. Similarly, this system also became under-designed the moment advances were made in electronics, computer science, and the uh, co co communications, the connectivity part. Now, what we failed to do as election commission is over the period of time, they should have upgraded the design of the EVM. What has happened is the control unit and the ballot unit are identified only visually. So Mr. Kanan, tell me if I go wrong anywhere. Um, what happens is the, both the control unit and the ballot unit have numbers on them. They are supposed to be engraved, but doesn't matter whether engraved or uh, labeled. The list, they are listed on a paper and all the candidate representatives sign that, yes, these were the numbers, unit numbers that were used. And at the time of counting, these are again visually verified that, yes, those numbers are present. What happens here is, just like you could replace a whole ballot box, you could replace a control unit. Nothing stops you from doing it if you, uh, if from some antisocial element to do it. Because there is no electronic recognition. So electronic pairing must happen. The way electronic pairing happens, and I'll give you an example of a car again. In all modern cars today, we keep our key in our pocket, walk up to the car, touch the handle or press a button on the handle and the car unlocks. That happens because the car and the key are paired at the time of manufacturing. If, if I was to walk with my key to your car, the car would not unlock. Now this happens in a wireless way. So we definitely are not proposing that. What we should do nonetheless, is pair the control unit and the ballot unit with a serial cable. What they should store is the control unit stores the num ballot unit serial number. All electronic devices have serial numbers. So the control unit should store the ballot unit serial number and the date and time when the pairing happens. And the pairing should happen just before the polling starts. So if the polling is going to start at 9.30, then at nine o'clock on the polling day, pairing should be done. Control unit will store ballot units number and time. And that same ballot unit number and time, even the ballot unit will store. Ballot unit will store control units number and time. And control unit will also save the same thing. Now let the polling happen. And before counting, ballot unit and control unit should again be connected with a serial cable and asked whether they recognize each other. If there is some uh, something wrong with the control unit, if the control unit has been replaced, let's imagine the worst case, somehow this control unit with same electronic serial number is duplicated. Now, and that is that is replaced the legitimate control unit. 
Now, this illegitimate control unit, however, will not have the date and time string along with that serial number because it was not paired on that day. That moment is passed. So, that uniqueness will ensure that the control units cannot be replaced. So, that additional security measure needs to be taken. And the third measure that needs to be taken is make the control units and the ballot units traceable. Again, in 1977, there was no internet, there was no GPS, obviously there was none. But today, we use GPS, we use live location every day on our phone. In, and you get a trans, GPS transmitter for as low uh, transmitter chip unit for as low as 220 ru Indian rupees. So there's nothing wrong. I mean, I, I just don't understand why it cannot be done because you don't have to, again, integrate this electronically with the control unit. No, our strength, EVMs cannot be hacked. They, they may be made to malfunction, but they cannot be hacked because they, are, they don't connect with anything. So don't connect this. Don't connect this electronically. Make a separate unit in a box, which is GPS transmitter, which has its own circuit and a battery. Put it inside the control unit. It doesn't connect electronically. It will be only traceable. You will not be able to, just as, you know, when we ask somebody to share their live location, if we want to talk to that person who is sharing the live location, we can't do that through the live location uh, signal. We have to call them. Similarly, this GPS transmitter will only share its location, which will be traced. So make the control units also traceable. Because the other problem is, if anything goes wrong with the security, and control units are, as uh, Mihir said some time back, a few lakh were missing. Now, this can easily become snowball into a national security threat because the whole election can be rigged. And today, there is, apart from the visual verification, there is nothing else. So, this make this connectivity, again, it's a fairly simple thing. Make this, make sure that Pairing is done before polling and verification is done before counting. At least these three things need to be done immediately. Ideally, as uh, e even I am an engineer uh, and uh, a postgraduate of computer science, so having done a lot of things with hardware and software, as an engineer, I would say the unit, the EVM as a unit, each subunits should have a full audit trail. What that means is it should in a write once memory, which means you cannot rewrite, you cannot overwrite what has been written. It should record every step, including power on event. So when the power is received, it will re record power on date and time. When button two is pressed, it will say button two pressed date and time button three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When it sends that button to signal to, let's say from ballot unit to control unit, ballot unit will say, sent to, to control unit. Control unit, when it receives it, it will say received to from ballot unit. So that a full replay can be done in case of doubt. Because see, this is now an electronic election system. Our vote has become electronic and the proof of correctness has to come from the system. Again, there is another problem, as Mr. Kanan said. We cannot verify what our vote was. We can never challenge it because one is it is a secret ballot and second is it is already cast. The proof has to come from the electronic system. Past is never the proof of future. My favorite uh, example is if that were so, none of us would be dead because we've never been dead in the past. But that doesn't happen. Similarly, if I make a call and it goes, uh, connects to a wrong number, it doesn't mean that every call that I'm going to make is going to be a wrong number. But if I make another call and it doesn't connect the, uh, as a wrong number, it doesn't mean that my first call that I connected as wrong number did not happen. Yes, that wrong, wrong call happened, but now this next call is not a wrong call. 
So this, all this proof has to come from the electronic system. When we deposit a check in the bank, bank gives us electronic proof in the form of a an, an entry in our digital statement of accounts. That proof comes from the electronic system. Similarly, this has to come from the electronic system. And lastly, two minutes. We have to realize one thing, that programs are routinely written to act differently on or after a particular date. And the simplest example is interest calculation program in the banks. It calculates interest every day because banks have to make a provision for that interest when they submit their report. But it's only at the end of the quarter, 30th September, 31st December, whatever, it also knows that it has to take an additional action of depositing the interest in the depositor's account if the deposit is a quarterly interest payout deposit. So the program reacts to the date. So no matter how much I test something before, if the program is written in such a way that it will work differently from tomorrow, no matter what I do until today, I am not going to find any misbehavior. And therefore, that the system did not misbehave has to be established by the system and not by the testers beforehand. That onus cannot be shifted to the testers or the challengers. Challenges cannot be thrown in this case. The, the proof has to come from the system. Thank you. Uh, Rick. See, keeping in mind the fact that elections are coming in two, two months, may I request uh, both uh, Tanan as well as uh, Madhav to suggest what we can do in these two months, uh, if it is possible, if anything is possible, if you have any suggestions. So, as I said, uh, I, I think some of the things can be achieved uh, in these two months, like the GPS tracking one, and uh, so although, uh, as Kanan said, uh, the EVMs have already been dispatched, since this is an external unit, if we, if there is a way, and, and I'm, Kanan is the, the expert here in that manner, matter, I have no idea of what the administrative setup uh, and the procedural part is, but technically this is achievable. Technically, it is also possible to delink the VVPAT from the control unit. What it means, of course, of course, this means that each of the dispatched EVM units, that is the control ballot unit and the control unit, will have to be opened. So that throws up a whole, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a Pandora's box. So people will start questioning that, but then. Unless that happens, there is no way one can stop the possible manipulation that the VVPAT does to the vote because the vote is completely opaque beyond VVPAT. Uh, and on the technology side, adding one more serial port, I'm sorry I'm using some technical terms, but then without that, I can't really explain. But then adding one more serial port in both these units and making writing two lines in the program to copy that signal and broadcast it or send it across the second port, these are not big things. But of course, it means that the units will have to be opened. So there may be uh, some constitutional, legal or whatever hassles there, uh, Kanan could speak to it. Uh, I mean, I could think of is, as you rightly said, uh, Mayor, that we could go to court maybe and get uh, some relief from the court, if at all. 